Gravitational potential energy. The change in the potential energy of a system associated with a change in the position of a member of the system is the negative of the internal work done. So delta U, final potential energy minus initial potential energy is minus the integral from initial position vector to final position vector, the dot product of force with incremental displacements. This is basically minus W internal. Well, actually, this is nothing but a statement of the fact that F is a conservative force. So the force is minus gradient of the potential energy or the change in the potential energy is minus uh, the work done by this force. Also, the gravitational force is a conservative force. So we can write it as minus gradient of the gravitational potential energy. Now, let's consider an object with mass m moving between points A and B. So here is the Earth, mass of the Earth, radius of the Earth. And this uh, object with mass m is at a distance r initial with respect to the center of the Earth. We have the r hat vector uh, pointing from the Earth towards the object. Now, this object moves from position uh, r1 to uh, position R final which is at point B. So you can see that the gravitational force is, is a central force pointing towards the center of the Earth because it's uh, attractive. So the gravitational force is minus G mass of the Earth mass of the object divided by R square R hat and because gravitational force is a conservative force the change in potential energy in going from point A to point B is final potential energy UB minus initial potential energy UA, which is minus the integral from R initial to R final, the force G mass of the earth M over R square in minus R hat uh, direction, dot product with displacements dr R hat. Okay. So this gives us for the potential energy change in going from A to B, G M E M integral R E to R final D R over R square. So uh, the minus sign here will get rid of this minus sign. R hat dot R hat is one. So G M E M over R square D R. Uh, G M E times M over R square. So G M E times M goes out. So we have integral of D R over R square which is minus one over R to be evaluated between R initial and R final. So we find that the change in potential energy is minus uh, G M E M one over R final minus one over R initial. So this would be minus one over R final plus one over R initial. But if we put a minus sign here, it will be plus one over R final minus one over R initial. So we can calculate the change in the potential energy of the system when we move this object from point A to point B. Now, uh, we can define a reference point for the potential energy, uh, the zero point of the potential energy. If the potential energy is zero at the zero force configuration. Now, when is the force between two objects zero when R is equal to infinity? So. Uh, we can say that if the initial potential energy is uh, zero at r equals infinity, we come from infinity to position r, the change in potential energy will be uh, minus gmem over r. Okay, so uh, if r initial is infinity, so this would become uh, zero minus gmem over over R would be the potential energy. So this, this is basically saying you take the particle or object from infinite distance uh, to a distance uh, R final with respect to the Earth. So the potential energy as a function of R with this assumption that the zero point of the potential energy is at infinity is minus GMEM over R. So if we plot this, what does this look like? Well, if we are at the Earth's surface, the distance between the two objects will be radius of the Earth. So the potential energy will be minus GMEM over RE. And if we are at infinite distance, it goes to zero. So it goes as one over R. So that's the gravitational potential energy. 
So the potential energy associated with two masses, M1, M2, instead of Earth, we can have in any other object with masses M1 and M2, uh, will be minus G M1, M2 over R. If one of the objects is Earth, it would be minus G M E M2 uh, over R. Okay. So an external agent must do plus G M1, M2 over R work to separate the two masses to infinite separation. Okay. So this is the internal work done minus W internal. If we do, uh, if we introduce an external force, then uh, the change in potential energy will be equal to the external, the work done by the external force. So we have to supply an energy of plus G M1 M2 over R with an external force to separate the two masses to an infinite distance. That's what it means. Okay. So uh, let's look at an example. Uh, so this energy that we have to supply in excess uh, of, well, we have to supply this energy U, which is called the uh, binding energy. If we apply, if we supply any energy in excess of this binding energy, it will go into kinetic energy. So we have taken care of the potential energy. The rest of the energy will go into kinetic energy. And for a system of three masses, the potential energy will be minus G M1 M2 over the distance between 1 and 2, minus G M1 M3 over the distance between 1 and 3, and minus G M2 M3 over the distance R2, 3. So this would be the potential energy corresponding to this configuration of having two masses at a separation of R1, 2, R1, 3, and R2, 3 uh, for uh, masses M1, M2, M3 respectively. Okay, so these pairs. <clears throat> so let's look at an example. Uh, the change in potential energy. A particle of mass m is displaced through a small vertical distance delta y near the Earth's surface. Show that in this situation, the general expression for the change in gravitational potential energy reduces to the familiar relationship mg delta y. Okay. So we have a displacement of delta y with respect to the Earth's surface. The particle has mass m. And we want to know if the change in potential energy will be mg delta y. So we have to show this. <clears throat> well, the change in potential energy will be u final minus u initial, which is uh, the final potential energy will be minus g mass of the earth, mass of the object, divided by r final, and the initial potential energy will be a minus g m e m over r initial, but the minus sign will make this plus, so g uh, mass of the earth, mass of the object divided by r initial okay so if we put this in g mass of the earth mass of the object parentheses we will obtain uh, r final minus r initial divided by r final r initial so this will be the change in potential energy now what is r final minus r initial that is our displacement on the y-axis, delta, delta y. And what is our initial times our final? Well, <clears throat> the key thing to pay attention to here is this vertical distance delta y is near the Earth's surface. So our initial and our final are approximately equal to the radius of the Earth. So this product will be radius of the Earth square uh, since we will have a delta y much less than the radius of the Earth, and that comes from the fact that the displacement is near the Earth's surface. So we see that the change in potential energy is approximately g mass of the Earth, mass of the object, our final minus our initial delta y, divided by radius of the Earth squared. So this is m, delta y, g 
mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth square, and we can recognize uh, this term to be the gravitational acceleration g. Therefore, we see that delta u is approximately equal to mg delta y. So we're also neglecting the height dependence of the gravitational acceleration uh, here because we are close to the Earth's surface. The potential energy change is approximately mg delta y. Okay, so uh, what have we seen here? Um, the change in the potential energy of a system is minus the work internal work done uh, because if the force associated with this potential energy is conservative force, that's basically what will happen. Uh, another way to say this is force is minus gradient of the potential energy. Now, what is gradient, you might ask? A uh, gradient operator, remember, is uh, the partial derivative with respect to xi hat plus partial derivative with respect to yj hat plus partial derivative with respect to zk hat. Okay, <clears throat> so the change in potential energy is minus initial position vector to final position vector, displacement uh, and force dot product. Uh, so if we go from position A to position B, uh, we see that the change in the potential energy is minus G, mass of the Earth M, 1 over R final, minus 1 over R initial. And we have a reference point for zero potential energy, that's an infinite separation with zero force configuration. So bas basically with this reference point, we can say that the potential energy will be minus G M E M over R when we are at a distance R from the Earth's center. And that basically has this one over R decay and uh, reaches a value minus G M E M over R E when we are at the Earth's surface. And if we generalize this to not Earth object, but to any other objects, any two objects, M1, M2, the potential energy of the configuration will be minus G M1, M2 over R. And this implies that an external agent must do plus G M1, M2 over R work to separate the two masses to infinite separation. Uh, so basically the work done by the external force would be uh, the change in the potential energy delta u in uh, separating the two objects and uh, this energy is called the binding energy and the energy we supply by an external agent in excess of the binding energy will go into kinetic energy and for not two masses but three masses the potential total potential energy of the configuration will be the sum of the potential energies of the pairs individual pairs one two two three uh, one three and two three then we have looked at an example uh, basically to verify that we have been using this mgh or mg delta y in for change in the potential energy uh, to we want to show that this statement is correct if the delta y is near the earth's surface so if we if we're not talking about thousands of kilometers of delta y which is comparable to the radius of the earth this statement is correct so we have written the change in the potential energy and we have noted that our final minus our initial is delta y and the product our final our initial is approximately the radius of the earth square because these uh, distances from the center of the earth are uh, approximately equal to the radius of the earth and delta y the change in the position is much less than the radius of the earth so with that uh, simplification we get an approximate change in potential energy m delta y g m e over r e squared this term is recognized as gravitational acceleration g at the earth's surface so this becomes approximately equal to m g delta y so uh, this is basically a very good approximation as long as we stay near the earth's surface so delta y should not be in the order of hundreds or thousands of kilometers